to subtraction now. Same example I gave you with addition now, but let me know what two segments I can subtract. And I will let you know so we don't have negative lengths for segments. A and B are the longer ones. All right, so what can I subtract up here that'll still be the same length? Here, let's go. 14, what can I still subtract? A minus C is still going to be the same length as B minus D. Or I could have went what instead? Five, what could else I have done? Five? Hi. And now we're doing subtraction instead. Same thing is still going to apply. You still need two pairs of equal quantities. All right, let's go to one. DAC, can you guys please, and I need to get better at this too, please locate angle DAC and tell me what type of angle it is. DAC. What did we call that type of angle in unit one? DAC, what type, Nick? Sorry, I thought you were going to answer. DAC, Hugh? That's a straight angle, right? Is equal to ECA. What type of angle is ECA? A straight angle as well. Uh, those are tough to mark congruent, but we can still do it. I'll just put the arc mark right here for DAC, congruent to ECA. I'll just put them right there. They're both straight angles. And what other two angles are equal? One and two. Go ahead and mark those with double arc marks now. Angles one and two. And we are asked to prove which two angles are equal? Three and four. So the first thing I want to just discuss is why is this going to be subtraction versus yesterday's addition? Why is this going to be subtraction versus yesterday's addition? What's up, Rachel? Aren't you going from a 180 degree angle to a much smaller angle in angle three? Does everyone see that? You're going from this straight angle to angle three. And Rachel, you said you're what? Getting bigger or smaller? Smaller, so I'm going to have to subtract. Everyone see why subtraction versus... Because tonight, homework, it's going to be mixed. It's not all subtraction tonight. I, I threw in an addition one in there to see if I can catch you off your game. Are we okay on why it's subtraction? I'm going bigger to a smaller angle three. Bigger to a smaller angle four. How many quantities do you need to subtract? Two. How many was I given? Can I go right away or do I need a reflexive in there? We can go right away. Let's go. Tell me first what two angles you want to subtract from each other. Let me know what two angles you want to subtract from each other. Let's go 16. Okay, D, I'll, I'll call it DAC. Is that what you said? Or? Yeah. Sorry, Meg. You're right. Yep. Angle DAC minus angle 1 is going to be the same as if I did what? 17. ECA minus 2. Perfect. And now we're not writing addition, but subtraction. Nice job. Do we see that? Getting smaller. I'm subtracting. I already had two pairs of equal quantities. I can subtract right away. How do I get three and four from this statement? What is the same as taking angle DAC and removing angle one? What else? What do I have left over when I remove angle one? The straight line, take angle one out. What's left? Angle three. This is what we did yesterday. Take ECA and remove angle two. What's left? Angle four. And what gives me the right to do that? What did I just do there? Okay. And this happens every year right at the beginning when I show this. Don't get the two confused spelling wise. You might mean subtraction, but you wrote substitution instead and vice versa. All right. Questions on that part? Going? All right, we know that one doesn't make you great. Here we go. 
this is where I'm going to have you guys work on your group in your groups in a second. All right, a little bit, just so you know, the setup here a little bit different. I already wrote the givens in. That's the proof statement up there. Okay, here are the givens. That's the proof statement right up top. All right, so DF and BE are congruent. That's what I'm giving you. And you need to prove me DE is congruent to BF. Okay, I'm just, I'll let you go now. But the first question I have, just to give you a kickstart, from the givens to the prove, is your segment getting bigger or is it getting smaller? From DF to DE, from BE to BF, are you getting bigger or smaller? Smaller, what type of proof is it? Subtraction. How many, equal, how many pairs of equals do you need to subtract? Two, how many are you given? You're on your own now. Talk it over with each other. We're okay. Everybody okay? Okay, let me stop right now. There's the quiz right there. There's the cutoff of the quiz. Reflexive substitution, addition, subtraction. Okay, what we do next, not on the quiz. You'll have about three or four questions at the beginning, which is name the property being used and two proofs. I think it's nine or 10 points. The quiz should take you about 10 minutes. Nothing will be harder than any proof I have given you yet. By, nothing will be tougher than what I've already given you homework or in the notes. Okay, so that'll be when you come in tomorrow. Everybody all good? Tomorrow, quick quiz, and then we move on to other theorems. Okay, all right. Totally taking a new path now, getting away from the addition and the subtraction and going to a totally new postulate, which is called halves of equal quantities are equal. I want to visualize this first. Can you please down below, or off to the side, I don't care, can you just draw me two line segments, A, B, and D, C, that look congruent in length? Okay, wherever you want to do it, off to the side, down below. Okay, just so we can see actual numbers instead of just the diagram here. Max, give me a, a length of AB. Okay, five, everybody. So I'm going to say that AB is five units long. How long is DC? Five units. They're congruent. Okay. All right, then it says AF. So somewhere in the middle, just eyeball it, somewhere in the middle of AB, can you put F for me? And e, it says EC, so somewhere in the middle of DC, can you please put point E? Okay, now my next question, how long's AF? If it's half of AB, how long's AF? Okay, and then how long is EC? What do you notice about AF and EC? They have the same length, which means they are congruent to each other. Okay, This is what's called halves of equal quantities are equal. Ready? What did you know about AB? What did you know about AB and DC? What were you told about AB and DC? They're congruent. So if I take two segments, two angles that are congruent, what will I know about their halves? They're also equal to each other. That's what we just proved. Okay? So if I take two equal quantities, take half of it, those halves will also be equal to each other. We're good? Okay, well, we're going to run into a little situation here because we're not always going to be given the halves and the givens. So I am challenging you guys right now to give me two vocabulary terms we talked about in Unit 1 that signify something is being taken half of because you will not get these half statements every time. You will see vocabulary terms that say, oh, this is getting taken half of. There were two terms, two terms that we talked about last unit that says, oh, something is getting taken half of. Jaquel, what do you have? Say that again. Bisector, ding. If I see the word bisector, something's being cut in half. Was that the only word we went over though, Sean? Midpoint. 
So if I start seeing now those two words in my givens, I know something's being taken half of, okay? Because we will not see this the whole time. So let's actually finish off this proof here because we didn't finish it yet. What two line segments are equal to each other? AF and EC because halves of equal quantities are equal. I told you you weren't always going to get those halves in the givens, and it's not going to be a two-step proof every time. Here's exactly what I'm talking about. Ooh, look at this one. CA, CA, bisects. Ding right there. There's our word, bisects, right? So I know something. What's being taken in half? DCB and DAB. Ready? What do you know about DAB and DCB? What else do I know other than they're being cut in half? Tell me something else I know about those two angles other than they're being cut in half. What else does it say, Nick? They're congruent. So if I take half of two things that are congruent, what do I know about those halves? They're equal. All right, so let's just go through. Now that we know it's halves of equal quantities, what the heck do I need to put in my proof? Emily, name me one angle that's being cut in half. DAB. So like the previous example, I'm going to tell you what's being cut in half. All right? So in step two, I'm going to say half of D. Emily said DAB was going to be cut in half. So I'm going to say, okay, half of DAB. Tell me what half of DAB is going to be equal to. Everyone locate, can you find, can you guys find where DAB is first? DAB, find where that angle is first. Everyone see it? It's this one right here. So name me half of that angle. Name me an, an angle that's half of DAB. Luke? Angle R? Now, I have a question. You are correct. Everyone agrees angle R is half of DAB. Are we all in agreement with Luke? We good? Okay. Could she have also said this one right here? Could we have also said that one? Why didn't we say it? Do you know why we we're not, we're not going to touch that angle even, if it, even though it's half? Look at your proof statement. What am I looking for? Angle. Yeah. That's why I'm picking that one. Okay, that's why I'm picking that one. So angle R is a half of DAB. Kate, they have another angle that's being cut in half. D, I'm sorry, DCB. A half of DCB, give me an angle that's a half of DCB. But I only want the one that we're dealing with in the proof. I don't care about the other one. Because you could give me two different answers here for half of DCB. I only want the one we're dealing with in the proof. Emma, and that is angle S. Boom. So you need to tell me those half statements before we use anything. So what would be my, my reason? Emily knew which angle was being cut in half. Kate knew which angle was being cut in half. How did those ladies know what angle was being cut in half? What signified being cut in half? Definition of a bisector. Not has of equal quantities. That's going to tell us something else. So I knew every angle was being cut in half because there was a bisector. All right, you ready? Cameron, what do you know about angles D, A, B, and D, C, B? They're equal, right? Everyone agree they're equal. First word here, halves of, do I have equal quantities here? R equal. So what can I say about angle R and angle S now? They are equal. 
So angle R is equal to angle S or congruent to. Now you can say halves. Oh, stop right there. Did I mention what was half? Did I mention already what was getting cut in half? Well, did I mention what was being cut in half? Yeah, it's in st statement two. You need that before you write this. That's what I'm just trying to show here. Make another, make the same point. Halves of equal quantities. Hey, stop right there. Do I have equal quantities? So it was given to me. Got it. I can keep writing. Halves of equal quantities are equal. So you guys need halves. And you need a pair of equal quantities before you are allowed to use this new postulate. Okay? Questions at all? Okay, perfect time now. You can start the assignment. I'm coming around, sitting with every group, making sure we're good to go. I will, oh, warning. I don't know how many there are tonight, but there is one that is not a subtraction or a halves of equal quantities. So be aware. Okay? So just don't assume it's subtraction or halves. And you can't use halves unless it's bisector, midpoint, or they actually give you the halves like you're looking at in number one, okay? If you want me to look over your proof, I certainly will, just let me know. 